welcome back to Jump Scare. I'm Betty. And I'm Shan. This week we're covering 2015's Shark Lake. I have a great idea. When we're in the water. What was that? What was what? <gasps> A bear went into the lake and killed somebody. Your killer's definitely not a bear. Who's ever heard of a shark in a lake? It will live and thrive until somebody kills it. What about Clint Gray? 2005 to 2010, trafficking of illegal animals. Bull, python. A damn tiger. I had a deal. When I buy something, I expect to get it. I think five years ago, you put this shark in the lake. You are going to give me my shark. She's cute. You touch her, I kill everyone you know. I'm going to end this. Get out of the water! Get out now! It's a coordinated attack. What do you mean? She was pregnant when she went into the lake. They're just doing what evolution programmed them to do. Shh, shh. Did you hear that? surviving behind you we pretend that it's not nature so 2015 that was not a good year for sharks i guess because this movie was pretty terrible <laughs> yeah it was real bad it stars Dolph Lundgren and then really do we need to name anybody else it's Dolph Lundgren no that's it he's the only one that matters and even he doesn't really that important so the film has Dolph Lundgren being some kind of uh, export guy that's like selling illegal items you know to the black market <clears throat> random cheetahs Sharks, I don't know, kind of weird shit. Yeah, he had all kinds of shit in his house. He had a cobra and everything else. Maybe he was the guy that let the Orlando Cobra loose back in 2015. Maybe that that is exactly who he is. Man, I love that Orlando Cobra Twitter account, though. That was great. Yeah, that was pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, So this is around, like, Lake Tahoe. Let me just tell you, the movie starts off with a car chase. And it looks like something that you would find, like, in a college like a college group put this together it just looks bad like you you know right off the bat when you've seen enough films when it's gonna be like very low budget just by the way that it looks like forget about Dolph and this was I had the hopes out the, the hopes were out for this because I was like Dolph Lundgren is like literally a genius so this movie can't be bad hmm. obviously I knew by saying <laughs> that 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 was gonna be a lie uh so <laughs> psych we did not finish this movie, so we are not going to cover it today or ever again. <laughs> no, once once starting this was enough. Once that the uh, the van squealed its tires on a dirt road like they were on concrete. I always love it when movies do that, like the tires squealing on the on the dirt. No, guy, no, it's not. It. I don't even. We didn't even fucking see the shark. Or the lake. Well, yeah, no, we I guess like, we did kind of see the lake. We were like 40 minutes into it when we were like, they haven't even shown a goddamn shark yet. We're, yeah. we're done. I mean, where were the sharks? And also... They were in the lake. Why? Oh, oh, is that where they were? Why did not Why did they decide to take the ABC school special approach? The whole beginning is just showing how the dad lost custody of his daughter who is like three years old and how the cop that like had the chase with him is the one that put him behind bars and caught him or whatever and she's gonna like foster this kid mm. and it's a whole foster battle like literally that's the beginning of the whole film what the fuck so instead we decided to try and find a better movie to watch and we watched werewolves within which came out this year It's heart neath the side. Hi, boys. This is a community. One that agrees about more than it doesn't. <laughs> Put it on your Kwanzaa tree. No such thing. 
the winds. You all believe? Like hard work. <laughs> Love. And the moon. Being a good neighbor. I know it's easy to get caught up in the fear of the situation. I know it's easy to point the finger and fear each other. But can we all just take a breath? Please hold off on being enemies. All I'm asking is that you be a good neighbor. Like Mr. Rogers. With guns, though. With guns, yes. Which is based on a video game that came out in 2016, but developed by Red Storm Entertainment. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably the best video game movie ever made. It is. It is actually the best video game ever made. I mean, I really loved Resident Evil when it first came out, but I loved it. But let's go back. How old were you when you saw Resident Evil? Okay, that's not the point. The point is, (laughs) I love the movie because I love the game so much, I was desperate. Like, I was like, I have to love this because this is all I'm fucking given. (laughs) It's nothing like obviously it's nothing like the game the resident evil so this or is like the most recent mortal Kombat movie where they never actually made it to the mortal Kombat tournament yeah it's like the monster mash song you never hear the, the monster, monster mash, mash song. yeah we never saw the mortal Kombat tournament in the mortal Kombat movie good job guys <sighs> so this one was directed by josh rubin who also directed uh, one that was on last year, I believe it was on Shudder, called Scare Me. Which we did begin watching that, and then we got very bored. Yeah, it wasn't for me. It was, uh, I see where they were going with it, but it would have been a really good play. Like, if you had done, I think if you had done that on stage, just like a play, I could see where it would be interesting. But it just didn't grab me in the movie. Yeah, two writers battling one another. But I have to say, I thought that, Josh Rubin had some hand in the writing in this one, but I guess he didn't. Only because it was this, like, just like Scare Me, this was also set in a cabin. And there is a writer yeah. in one of uh, amongst the people. So this is basically, if you had to mash two movies, like, someone's like, I need to know exactly what this movie's about. It's Clue meets dot, dot, dot. We'll see this this film that we just saw, The Werewolves Within. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's a little just, it's just Clue, but you changed one of them to be a werewolf instead of a murderer. Well, he's still a murderer, but he's also a werewolf now. Yeah. Um, so the plot of the film is there's a, a snowstorm that traps residents in a local inn. And the whole town, it's your, it's your typical quirky town up in the mountains. There's a bunch of weird, unusual characters. We've got the new guy in town who doesn't know anybody, which is Sam Richardson. He plays the new uh, park ranger who's just moved to town. And so far, the only person he's made friends with is the male person, as she corrects him, the male person named Cecily. And she kind of takes him around town, tells him who everyone is, what their deal is. You kind of get to see a little bit of a, you know, who everyone is. Basically, as she goes on their mail route, as he, I'm sorry, as he goes on the mail route with her. Uh, if any fans are out there of what we do in the shadows, Guillermo is in this film and he's hilarious. Uh, Harvey Gillian or Julian, who, who, Julian, <laughs> I'm terrible with pronunciation. <laughs> it's not my strong suit, but yeah, he's really funny in the movie. And then there's other people that you would recognize from here and there. Yeah. Most of the people in this are character actors that you would see, you've seen in a dozen movies. One of the characters named uh, Parker is a guy played by, I think his name is Wayne Duvall. And I think he's been in every single Law and Order, CSI, and crime show that's been out there. So you've seen him as a judge, lawyer, murderer in some of those shows at some point if you ever watched him. I have to say that I I don't want to say I had high expectations. I loved what I had seen from the trailer. And, oh, I did want to say that this movie kind of fits 
our theme that lasted only two weeks, which is the aquatic theme, because technically they're in snow. And when snow melts, it becomes water. Uh, Wink, wink, wink. Uh, (laughs) What's your favorite part of the film? uh, I like it when they're just, when they're first trapped in the house together. You, you first, like you see them, like I said, they go on the mail route. You get to meet all the quirky people and see everybody's got little nuts in the town. It's kind of like um, what was that show? Um, do do not do do north or something like that. Northern Exposure. Oh, Northern Exposure. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the quirky little town in Alaska. This one is somewhere I forgot where they said it was supposed to be set. Beaverfield. Yes, Beaverfield. Beaverfield is a little town somewhere where it's very cold. I'm not sure if they say what state. It's very fucking cold. And you go around the town with the male woman, new male woman. She shows him, you know, he, she's showing the park ranger everything. You see all the quirky, crazy characters that are around town. You get the idea that, like, everyone there is kind of bored. Uh, some of the people want out because there's going to be a new, like, natural gas pipeline coming through. But in order to do that, they have to sell their property. So it's the typical, you know, do we sell, do we not sell to the big city? We have to move and all that that you see in a lot of these movies. And it's Vermont. Oh, Vermont. They're in Vermont. And this is what causes the tension between the townsfolk is this pipeline. Yeah. You have the people that, you know, the typical people that have like the vote yes for the pipeline signs on their on their lawn. And then the other people that are just totally against it for, you know, this and that. Um I the movie moves pretty well. There's something's always happening. Sam Richardson, um, he's he plays Finn in the movie. He's the park ranger. He's actually funny, but like he's so awkward. I just want to give him like a big hug. Like he plays the character pretty well. Yeah, the the whole thing of it is is that he's a nice guy, and everyone always tells him that he's too nice. You know, he's the guy who's going out to, you know, help a stranger change their tire. And he's, you know, he's doing all the super nice things that no one expects him to do. But he's going out of his way to do them. And everyone kind of makes fun of him for that. Because they're kind of like, you know, you can tone it down a little bit. You don't have to be this nice. What's that movie that we covered? I've literally asked you this like three times already. And every time you tell me, like, it literally goes in one ear and out the other. That movie that we covered that's just like this movie. Um... Where it's like the seventies, and they all go to like the house, and someone is a werewolf. The beast must die. Beast must die. I always think it's the beast within. Obviously, no, it's not the beast within. I'm like, okay, that's not it. The beast must die. This is like the beast must die. It has that same kind of. Obviously, this film came out way before the video game, so maybe the video game maybe inspired by that. I've been a little inspired by that. Um, because, there's no werewolf break in this movie, though. No, there's no werewolf break <laughs> for you to determine who the werewolf is. I love that. Just right, right towards the end, it come, and that beast within it comes on. We will now pause for a few moments while everyone in the audience speculates as to who the werewolf really is. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> Just like in the people on the end, everyone has guns. Like, there's they have weapons and stuff. Yeah, everybody in this place is armed. Yeah, they're very armed. Yeah, too armed uh, for people that live in a town where the population is like 50. It felt like there was only like 10 people that lived in a fucking town. Yeah, and but yet everybody has 12 guns. So it's exactly right. Uh, it's, this is one of those, uh, IFC films. When I see it now, when I'm like, oh, it's IFC or what's that other one? AFI? A24. A24. I'm like, I think I'm gonna like this. I have a lot of, you know, yes, a lot of love for those, uh, two production companies. Yeah. There's some ones when you, certain ones, when you see the logo, you're like, all right, this is probably going to be pretty good. Even if it's not great, it's still going to be pretty good. It's like when you used to see like new line pictures and that kind of stuff. You'd be like, all right, this is going to be a crazy horror movie. Yeah, this is a classic whodunit film. I think we should not do spoilers. Uh, uh, The the movie's called Werewolves Within, so obviously there's a werewolf. Maybe two? We don't know. Uh, We're not going to tell you. So I I will just go on record, though, and say I called who the werewolf was immediately. He did actually call who the werewolf was immediately. So that was pretty annoying. Yeah, I have to say, not that I was trying to figure out who the werewolf was. I deep down inside, I wanted there to be everyone was a werewolf. It's plural. Yeah. So I'm expect, expect, expecting more than one or two. 
yeah. werewolves. <laughs> but like immediately, I was like, oh, that's that's it. That's who it is. There's it's a it's a horror comedy. Um, the I think it's a good balance uh, between the horror. It could have been more gruesome. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Was this rated R or PG-13? Because I, I really, I mean, those they, I think they said fuck a lot in it, so it was probably R-rated. But you could have really, if they had just cut out a lot of the cussing, it could have probably easily been a PG-13 in terms of gore and all that. Yeah, I Because there's really not you. that much, and it's it didn't really take away from it. It's not one of those movies where you felt like it was heavily edited to get like a, a lower rating or something. It just seemed like that was just naturally the way it was. It's kind of like when you watch uh, something like Tremors. Tremors doesn't feel like they've trimmed anything out of it, you know, because that's just the way it's done. It's rated R for rude language and light dismemberments. Fuck you. <laughs> light dismemberments. Yes, that's an actual fucking rating. So I'm sure that's mostly language is what it got the rating for. Oh, and sexual references. Dot, dot, dot. Wow. Okay. I, I just love these ratings nowadays. Yeah, I like it when it says features historical smoking. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? We paid like $7 to see this film on Amazon Prime. It was worth all the dollars. Yep. Uh, I had a really good time. And it's like an hour and a half of your life. I... It moves really quickly. You're not going to, you're not going to, it's not one of those ones that drags. It does feel like Clue in a way. Like people have compared this to Clue a lot. And this is probably one of the first ones I've seen since Clue where that's probably a really good comparison to it. Because it's really like, once it starts off, the Clue is the same way. It's a little slow in the beginning. Once everyone gets there and the first murder happens, then it's just kind of like rapid fire dialogue. Things are happening constantly. People are disappearing. And just like Clue, there are hints as to who might be a werewolf if you know where to look and you realize like, this person was not here for this. This person wasn't here for this. You can kind of figure out what's going on, but you have to kind of pay attention to it. So I do like that aspect of it is that you, once you know who or whom the werewolves are, you can kind of figure out, oh, okay, this is how they were doing it. And it's, I, I, I enjoyed it a lot because like I said, I think it's the first one to really sense Clue to have that vibe really well. I think the other thing that I liked about it is that because of the pipeline tension there are others there's another subplot happening which kind of adds on to the whole werewolf thing because some of these people could be being murdered because of the pipeline not because the werewolf is after maybe them. May maybe that might be a thing yeah so you're not sure if it's going to be a hundred percent sure if it's going to be a werewolf murder because the werewolf is hungry and wants to eat people? Or is someone just using this as an excuse? Yeah. I wonder how they even went about making this into a movie. Obviously, we already established, and many people already know, that this is based on a video game. But it's not like it was the best video game of all time. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people had even heard of it until the movie. And I Which, again, is probably why it turned out so well. Because a lot of these times when you have, like... A very unknown property like here's a book that no one's ever heard of someone you know three people really like this book and they turn it into a movie it turns out pretty well when you get something like a really big like just I'm gonna say randomly like a John Grisham book it usually doesn't turn out that well because everybody's got an opinion about what should be done with it you know when it's a lesser known property they tend to just hand it over and go do what you want to do we're only giving you like three million dollars to make this movie so we don't care yeah, the game, there was a VR uh, version of the game, and the this game, we actually own a card game. Yeah, just called Werewolf. Called Werewolf. That's literally the same premise. It's a medieval town village, and within the medieval village, there's the townsfolk, and then you pass the cards out, and then you're either a townsperson, a, a villager, or you're the werewolf. There's another or one. Two. Sim yeah, there's another similar one like this called like Mafia, where you have to determine who's in the mafia kind of thing. There's a lot of similar games like this, and I think that's why this one was kind of easy to adapt because they didn't have to do a lot of like, oh, well, which one are we going to adapt? This version, this version, which characters do we use, and all this, because there really isn't a specific character to use, you know? It's just 
who's playing it? I've played a version of this game. Uh, it's one of my favorite games, actually, to play during uh, Halloween because it costs you no money unless you really want to get nerdy with it. But then you can't only the villager part. You would have to wear like a villager bonnet or whatever or hat. But you, everyone sits around a circle, which is reminiscent to the video game. Yeah. Uh, everyone sits around a circle, and it's called the Murder Wink game. Oh, I've yeah, played that one. I've called played that one in college too. They did that as an experiment with a nonverbal communication class I took. The teacher had everyone come in and just start walking around the room and she had already picked someone before class to be the killer. Mm. And as they would this person would pass by, they would just wink at you subtly and set you down. People had to be like trying to figure out who it was. Exactly. Yeah. I love that game. That game is so fun. Don't ask me how I played the game since I do not know how to wink. But <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but I did my best. Uh, I wasn't the I wasn't the uh, killer. So there well, you go. Obviously not. <laughs> you wouldn't know because it would look like I was having a seizure. Yeah, because you can't wait. No offense to people that have seizures in real life. Uh, just had to throw that out there. But the yeah, so I think that between the parlor game of the like you know obviously the wink wink the murder wink game and then. This video game, the card game, there's been this has been a continuing thing of yeah. trying to figure out like who is the werewolf, which I love that because it's so fun. Uh, the only negative thing, well, I guess that's gonna ruin the spoiler thing, but the look of the werewolf, did you care for the transformation? I know that means I know like everyone really fucking has a hard on for uh, American werewolf. Everyone loves that transformation. Um, where did this fit in your list of like all the transformations you've seen on screen over the years? Uh, pretty good because this is not like one with a lot of CGI. Uh, like what was that one we watched? Uh, Bad Moon, where it was a very, That's very what, CGI mm -hmm. werewolf. The movie itself is not that bad, but the CGI transformation of that werewolf is terrible. So bad. And other ones I've seen like, uh, what was that one? Uh, Wolf Lake or something like that that uh, Eli Roth did a few years ago. But it was an Eli Roth movie, so I did not watch no, it. No, it was a series. Oh, no. I don't know. But uh, Teen Wolf? Was it Teen Wolf? <laughs> I no, know. this was one that was on like a Netflix, it was like a Netflix series. Oh! Oh, shit. I did watch that. Hemlock Grove. There we go. First of all, let me, let me recant what I said. Okay, yes. I do not like Eli Roth. I'm like, whatever about his films. Uh, except for the little short movie he did for the Grindhouse films. The Thanksgiving? Yes, Thanksgiving, yes. That's that, one of the greatest trailers of all time. That is the greatest trailer of all time, and that's the only Eli Roth, well, that is the second to only Eli Roth thing that I like. Because I fucking loved Hemlock Grove. Besides the fact that, you know, the guys were hot, and one of the guys is fucking it. Like, Pennywise in the new Pennywise. Oh, yeah. But we're not, not going to get into... All that. Uh, Hemlock Grove. Yes. That was actually fantastic transformation in that TV series. Uh, but yeah, I've seen other werewolf ones where it's, they rely so much on CGI, it just doesn't work. Oh, you don't like that one from Hemlock Grove. I, I do. I, I like that. Yeah, I didn't care for that one. It was a little uh, It was a little fast on there. You know, I mean, it was an interesting way that they did it, but, you know, I'm not in love with the American werewolf thing like a lot of people are. It's fine, but... Now that we have so much better technology and things that we could do so much easier, we still haven't had like a really amazing werewolf transformation since then. You know, Michael J. Fox's Teen Wolf is the best one of all time. Okay. Anyhow, this one, <laughs> they don't overly rely on CGI. The werewolf itself looks pretty good. Um, like I said, there, but this was one of the ones that you know this one has a low budget and they're obviously going for a not a full on you're not this is more like a, a wolf man kind of thing yes because like there's were, clothes there's clothes yeah this is not like a four-legged werewolf running around this is much more like a wolf man kind of transformation which I, if you're going to have a b low budget that's the way to go with yes, it yes don't definitely. try to make the cgi or have somebody in a costume crawling around on all fours when you only have 85 dollars to do this just spend the money on appliances and just say they're a wolf person instead of trying to pretend like you're going to do the fancy, you know, yeah. werewolf on four legs. Don't bad moon it is what you're saying. Yeah, don't bad moon it. Just, <laughs> We're just going to say that from now on. Don't bad moon it. Just just go for the old-timey wolf man. It's fine. Old-timey 
wolf man. Yeah. Now I'm picturing That's like. That's the name of my band. <laughs> Wait, when you go up, are you wearing spectacles? Yes, I've got the wolf man costume on, but with glasses, like sitting on the end of my nose. With glasses? Yeah. Hello, that's... Cleveland. We're old timey wolf man. <laughs> and we're here to rock. That we're... was really terrible. No, we're... Get real. We're a folk band. <laughs> oh, you're a folk band. Okay. <laughs> Oh, classic. Uh, yeah. What did you think we were going to play? Hair metal? Wow. Wow. <laughs> did anyone hear the drum set that just went off in the background? <laughs> I can't with you. Yes. Okay. Now you just totally fucking got me off track. I I was indifferent about the transformation. Uh, it, it's fine. Like you said, it's a, it's cost effective. But it doesn't look fucking terrible. Yeah. I'm pretty sure just by the way that it moved, it, it had to have been half and half. There was no way that was all CGI. It had to have been uh, practical and CGI. To some, Obviously, the eyes are going to be CGI. Yeah, That's going to really be the main mess thing. With them like, it's crazy now some of these movies where they change people with CGI and you don't even realize it. Like, what was that Mayhem movie where I didn't realize? I just assumed they just put contacts in people's eyes. I didn't realize they actually went through and digitally changed everyone's eyes to be a different crazy color when they got infected in that movie. Yeah, they're like, you know what? We're not going to do that because um, that's like, they're so using those like weird 1980s like glass. Who Who's the fucking person that was like, you know what's a good eye contact? One's made out of glass. And the special effects ones, it's the size of your whole fucking eyeball. Like, how did they put that shit in there? That's why they don't use that shit anymore because it was, like, fucking Terrible. cutting people up and... Yeah, like, I, they talked about that on The Lost Boys. Like, Kiefer Sutherland could only keep those contacts in for, like, five minutes before his eyes just... He couldn't stand it. So that's why they had to do all those shots really quickly. He was also like, you know what? I'm going to get laid with or without these contacts. <laughs> so I don't fucking really need matter. them. I don't need them. I'm fucking Keith Sutherland. He just wear, needs to wear the duster trench coat. That's, that's it. That's it. He's in. And maybe walking around with a box of fucking Chinese. That's all he needs. He's there. <laughs> I wonder how many Chinese food boxes he's signed over the years at conventions. Zero, because I don't think he's done any conventions. He has. He did that one last year. It was like a Lost Boys reunion. It was him, Jason Patrick, and uh, what's her name? Well, that's bullshit. Where the fuck was I? Obviously, in Florida. Damn it, Florida. Damn it. Oh, last year, but also COVID. How did that Well, it was the year before. Oh, okay, okay. No, I was like, wait, Last year never brain. happened. <laughs> the forgotten year. Forgotten, forgotten, forgotten. Uh, if you... Let's... Hollywood. Let me just fucking say right now. Do not make a sequel to this film. There's no, no sequel that needs to be made. We no. we don't need one. It there, there doesn't need the story has ended. Move on to the next terrible Fear Street slash Craft Legacy remake slash revisioning other you fucking have in mind. Some other shit that you're gonna fuck up. Go to that, but that's gonna make you bajillions of dollars because people are lambs. Okay, I'm done. Okay, are you done? So on the scale, I would give this out of four knives. I would go ahead and give this one. Uh, I'd say it's a good solid three and a half. Oh, wow. Solid three and a half. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I give it three knives. Three three solid knives. Three Michael Myers knives. Three Michael Myers butcher knives. There you go. There you go. Are you, are you happy with the... I'm happy with that now. With the size yes, the of size, the knives? Yes, the size. They need to be large ones, just making sure. Large knives. Not like a paring knife. No. Not one of those. The massive one. Well, we have covered... Shark Lake. <laughs> Very briefly. That ended our aquatic theme for the month because I don't know if you've noticed, maybe you haven't, but we've covered a lot of aquatic movies uh, in our whole like time we've been doing this podcast. So go visit other ones we've done. Shed, pa- uh, Piranha, Piranha 3 Double D, The Bates, the fucking one with the alligator. We're going to call it Alligator. It wasn't Alligator. The one that's set in Florida, but it's really in, like, Jerusalem. Crawl. Crawl. (laughs) We've covered plenty of other films. Go out and uh, listen to any of those amazing podcasts, because we have a plethora. Uh, And stay tuned to the horror. And now, folks, it's time to say goodnight. We sincerely appreciate your patronage. 
and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.